my good morning, Seminary Church. Good morning. Good morning, Seminary Church. Welcome to church today. Happy Fourth of July weekend. We hope you are doing. It's so good. You all look great right now, wearing red, white, and blue, looking so festive. It's, uh, it's good to be here. Of course, we welcome those who are in the sanctuary and those who are streaming online. My name is Chris, and I'm so excited to be serving as your pastor here. From everyone uh, on behalf of the staff, we're honored you're here and are grateful. We've been praying for you all week. Um, our church is committed to making a difference in our community, and a great example of this is we would like to invite you to participate in our Roanoke Farmer's Market this Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. Seminary Church is sponsoring a booth where we're going to do some kids games, some sidewalk chalk, bubbles, coloring, crafts, things like that. So we're going to have a presence down there. We like to invite everyone and anyone. So this Friday, 5 to 8 p.m. down at the Roanoke Farmer's Market. And in fact, we might even have a few of the musicians here playing. <laughs> Chelsea out there. And, we, and if, if you're in the crowd, we might call you up. So you better bring your singing voices ready. Have, have your, your, uh, your, your harmonicas tuned up. But we're going to draw. So yes, uh, we will have our very own Chelsea Dorson up there with some others. So we're excited to that, uh, for that. Once again, we're grateful that you're here today. If this is your first time or if you have any information, that you would like to share, please feel, feel free to fill out some of the Connect cards that are in your pew. For those who are streaming online, feel free to text us or put something in the chat. We'd love to connect with you. And also just, again, we have some other announcements. Feel free to direct your attention to things on the bulletin, as well as some other fill out forms. We have a new idea coming up in a couple months. We're gonna be doing two separate services. So there's a survey over there we love to have your information. We love to um, connect with you. As usual, following the service, we'll have a, a fellowship hour where we, have, where we have some coffee and donuts, and we'd love to invite you to stay for that today. And uh, we're glad you are here today. Before we begin worship service, I'll just say one more quick announcement, and that is tonight we will not be having some more Sunday in observance of the holiday weekend. So no some more Sunday this weekend, but we invite all to come for the Roanoke Farmer's Market this Friday. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. We've been praying for you guys all weekend. And as we invite our acolytes to come forward for the worship service, we'd like to prepare our hearts for this time. Would you please stand in body or in spirit as we have our call to worship? Unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You shall be happy and prosper. Your family like a fruitful vine in the, how, in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the one who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. And let us pray. Ever living God, instill in us, we pray, the trust and self giving that your word imparts to us. Teach us again and again during this time together that you are always with us. Remind us that all we have is a gift from you and is meant to be shared. So send your Holy Spirit, we pray, that we 
may be one in the service and worship and honoring you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now with so many friends and family here, why don't you take a few minutes to meet and greet each other, COVID-friendly, of course. Hey, what's up, man? One of the traditions we have here at seminary is to ask for joys and concern that have gone throughout the week. This week, of course, we would like continued prayers for our nation, our town, our people, as well as special prayers for Keith Hartley, Jay Sagers, and Lynn Swainer as well. Are there other things this week that we could uplift in prayer or in praise? Yes. Yes, continued pair, prayers for Pastor Keith, who is recovering from his knee surgery. Yes, Vicki, great point. Are there other things that we could uplift in prayer or in praise? All right. Well, at this point, I'd like to invite our, our worship team to please come forward. And would you please stand in body or in spirit as we have our first worship services?
Thank you. You may be seated. Would you please join me as we pray? Oh God, you real, truly are worthy of our praise. When we look at creation, we see its splendor. When we look at the world, we see its beauty. When we look at a child, we are filled with the wonder of life. And when we see our friends and family, we are surrounded by love. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you have surrounded us with, our families, our friends, our homes, our cars, and every good thing that you've done for us. And God, as reluctant as we are to admit it, we're grateful that you demand our best efforts at times and stretch us beyond our comfort zone. Because truly, God, you believe more in us than we do in ourselves. Lord, we confess today that all of us here have fallen short. We have fallen short in thought and word and in deed and things that we have done and things that we have left undone. The truth of the matter is, Lord, that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For this, Lord, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. And ask that you please forgive us, Lord, and restore us and rejuvenate us into the person that you want us to become. Please, Lord, forgive us of our sins and allow us to be transformed into the image of Christ. Dear God, we come to you today with many things on our hearts. Around the world, there are still tensions between Russia and Ukraine. We have over 6.5 million people displaced by this conflict. The world is still recoiling from the effects of the supply chain crisis, Lord. We also have prayers for the shootings in Oslo, Norway. Lord, in the United States, we have prayers. Prayers for the safety of everyone as we head into a holiday weekend. Prayers around the U.S. for those who have been impacted by the school shootings, by the nationwide protests, by failed wildfires in Texas, an energy crisis, Lord, an overstressed health care system. And Lord, of course, we come to you today seeking prayers for those in our own congregation. We ask you to be with Lynn Swainer, Jay Sagers, Keith Hartley, and Pastor Keith Schreffler. Lord, and for all those unspoken prayer requests that we have at this time. Lord, we come here together today in unity, saying a prayer that's said around the world. So may you help those who are struggling. May you care for those who feel alienated and lost. And may you protect those who are vulnerable. And may we conclude this time of prayer today by reciting our Lord's Prayer. Would you please join me as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would like to invite the children in the church to please come forward. We're going to have a children's message. Now you guys may want to come forward. Okay, so we're going to do an activity today. And we'll see about this. Okay, who wants to be my star? Who wants to be the star of the show here? 
All right, all right, wait here, let's see. So you're gonna get this one. You're gonna get this one. Oh, oh that's right. Oh, okay, here, 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 here. Let's let's go get this one. There. You get this one. All right. Get this one. Let's get. Right, let's get this one over on there. All right. Well, hey. Pay. Next time, let's see. We'll see about this. All right. All right. So here. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to read a story today. All right. Okay. So everyone here, we need to line up here. Okay. Ready? Here's what we're going to do. All right. We should have rehearsed this. Okay. C can we all go form a line? Let's go all form a line. Michelle, can you have everyone line up behind you? All right. Let's go over there. Let's line up behind Michelle and face this way. So yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. So the story from today goes something like this. All right, and who wants to be Jesus? Okay. Okay, let's, let's have, okay, let's, here, shall come over here. Okay. So the story from today goes something like this. And Jesus taught and said, watch out for the teachers of the law. So Tim, watch out. Watch out for the teachers of the law. These are all the teachers in the law. So you guys can flow, act, dan dan dance and look fancy. Just dance and look fancy. Yeah, fancy. Like you can dance, you can, you can floss. So yeah, d yeah, they're, they're dancing, they're flosses. <laughs> this, watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing lobes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. They have the most important seats and they devour widows' houses for show. And he, Jesus sat down. So here, come sit down here, Jesus. All right, then it come wa watch this way and come through and throw the money, call the, throw the money in the offering plate. Yeah, so you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, you walk through just in there. And Jesus sat down the place where the offerings were and watched the people in the crowd putting money in, put money in the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. Okay, so we'll go throw in large amounts. Oh, he's keeping that. No, it's right. Oh, he threw. Okay, okay. No, it's right. Okay. Oh, yeah, I am joking. I'm joking. All right. So many rich people threw in large amounts. But then there was one who had just one dollar. Who has just one dollar? Here, she wants to keep that. That's right. You can. All right. There was just one who had one dollar. So come forward and then put the dollar in and say this. Truly, I tell you. We should have practiced this. I'm sorry, stage call, you know. Okay, ready? Check. Okay, say, truly I tell you. Truly I tell you. This one. This one. Who put in one dollar. This one who put in one dollar. Gave more than the rest. Gave more than the rest. Round of applause for all of that. All right, you guys did great. All right, okay. Perfect. That was our children's message for today. We're going to pick it up with that. We have some coloring. Yeah, you, if you want to. Hold on to that. It's good. We have uh, um, some crayons. Could, could some of the, the parents, you guys help me hand out some of the, the crayon uh, totes. We'll, we'll do that as, as we get ready for our children's message. Thank you. Special round of applause to all the actors. The actors. Yes. Yes. That's right. It's all right. They can, hey, it is what it is. And it's optional. Go ahead. That's right. You. You can, you can, you can, oh, the moms are like, don't you dare take that. <laughs> take it. All right, special thanks. And again, there are some, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, as we hand out some of the children's bags, okay, perfect. Next time you all might participate in the children's thing, I gotcha. Okay. Our scripture passage for today is taken from Mark. Mark chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. Mark chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around, flowing in robes, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and have the most important seats in the synagogues, and in the places of honor at the banquets. 
They devour widows' houses for a show and make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. And calling his disciples, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in everything, all she had to live on. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let's get this story straight. Jesus was in Jerusalem. He was watching people, teaching his disciples. He began saying things like this, Watch out for those who are holier than thou, who love to walk around, preening in the radiance of public flattery, basking in prominent positions, sitting at the head of every church function. When they pray, they pray really, really long, flowery prayers. And when they give, they always let you know how much. Truth be told, they're hypocrites. Because all the time they're exploiting the weak and the helpless, and their heart is not in it. And in the end, they'll pay for it. Meanwhile, sitting across from the offering box, Jesus was observing a crowd tossing money in the collection, and he observed how many rich people were giving large sums. Because when people would drop their offerings into these trumpet-like vases, you could hear the rattling, hear the sounds. So amidst all the people gawking, hearing these sounds, he notices one, a poor widow, who puts two small coins in, measly cents, and I bet no one applauded when she gave. There wasn't anyone who turned their heads. But this one, unnamed, unknown to the world, caught the attention of Jesus. And we see from the story today, that's when Jesus said, I truly, I tell you that this poor widow gave more to the collection than all the others put together because others gave what they'll never miss, but she gave her all. Now, some of those in the audience with a CPA background, or even just some of the disciples in the crowd, might have been a little bit confused. I mean, don't you think? I mean, here they were in the temple watching a long line of people, each dressed in their fine linen, adorned with expensive jewelry, walking up to this large chauffeur box, basically like a trumpet, and pouring in coins, and every coin made a clink. And they're giving a tremendous amount of money. They're praising God. Hallelujah. And then here is someone who just walks up, throws in a couple pennies, just ordinary woman, the smallest Greek coin, two lepta. What's going on here? Jesus, do you need a lesson in accounting? Jesus, are, are you really trying to tell us here something? I mean, Jesus is like, what's going on? Imagine this. Imagine your church in Fort Wayne is trying to raise $60,000 for a new educational wing. Your Sunday room schools are full. So you have to open up, build more. So you put a thermometer on the wall of, you know, $60,000. But then some of the wealthy members of the congregation approach you, and they tell you that they would, they would like to sponsor the entire amount with a few stipulations. First things first, they'd like to have their name on the wing. You think, no worries. We can make that happen. But then, well... As planning meetings go by, little by little, the education wing starts to turn into a different project altogether. At first, the family just wanted the name on the wall, but now they want to pick off the color and carpet, and then they recognize that maybe they should put in a cafeteria in the corner of it, because sometimes they have friends there from their golf club. And then, well, instead of another wing for the preschool, maybe they just need another meeting for the adults. And little by little, day by day, you begin to regret your decision. And when you try to tell them in the board meetings, hey, this is for the education wing for the kids— They began to tell you about who's paying the check. 
And so meanwhile, an elderly husband whose deceased wife was a Sunday school teacher for 20 years approaches you and tells you that he's not gotten his daily McDonald's coffee for the past six months, saved up his pennies, and given you a check for $860 and presents it to you. And now you begin to see the dilemma that Christ is telling us here. And so I ask you, which would you rather give? Which would you rather receive? A large offering pitted with spit, spit, speculation, pride, and ego. I know, too many S's in the alliteration. Pitted with speculation, pride, and ego. Watch out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or a small offering given from the heart. I guess now we can perhaps understand a little bit better what Christ meant when he said, truly, this widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. Or imagine this. Imagine the churches in Roanoke decide to put their money together to create an after-school program because they see so many kids walking around the streets. So they start to fundraise. Someone suggests they should get a grant from the federal government to start a boys and girls club, so they do. But now they have to build a building. And so the stipulations increase, and now they have about $5 million to raise. So they get a grant from Purdue Fort Wayne, but only on the stipulations they put into science and technology, engineering, math section. So now they have to hire someone to do it. And now because the costs are $5 million, they go to wealthy donors in Fort Wayne asking them for money, and they hold galas and balls and banquets and fundraisers, raising as much money as they can, and finally they raise the money, and everyone's excited. But then in the end, due to the politics and government of state universities and all everything else, the project never comes through. And weeks later, you find out that a mother took out a small loan on her house and has been running a small boys and girls club out of the, ele out of the elementary school because she believes in the cause because she had a lost child due to an overdose. She just wanted the kids off the streets. And so again, I guess we can start to see this dilemma. Which offering would you rather receive? A million dollar large offering pitted with stipulation, pride, and ego? Or a small offering given from the heart. I guess we can begin to understand what Christ is saying here when he said, this poor widow has put him more into the treasury than all the others. I guess by now I hope that we can begin to see that Christ is not actually making a mathematical error. Because I hope we can start to see that actually there's something important to hear what Christ is saying. And here's what I want to explain to us, because here's the context. If we don't understand this context, we may not understand exactly what's going on here. It's so important and so relevant because sometimes we in the church miss it all together. This passage is taken from Mark chapter 12, and what's before chapter 12 is chapter 11. And chapter 11 is basically this, where Christ walks into Jerusalem— for the triumphal entry. He's on his way towards the cross. He's preparing his last messages, his last words on earth. And in chapter 12, what's so interesting is that all these church people come to try to trap him. We see in chapter 12, verse 13, first it's the Pharisees and the Herodians. They try to trap him in a statement. They say, teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity and you aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. So teacher, please tell us, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And Jesus said he knew their hypocrisy and said, why are you trying to trap me? Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And they had brought a coin and asked, whose image is this? And he said, it's Caesar's. Then he said, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And they were amazed. But if that weren't enough, they came to try to trap him again. You see, they weren't trying to actually help him. They were trying to trap him with their eloquence and their stipulation so that they could get rid of his philosophy here. And they asked him again, check this out. In verse 18, they say, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother died and leaves a wife but no children, this man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. And they go on and on and on. Now there were seven brothers. The first one died without leaving any children. The second one married in the widow, but also died, leaving no children. It was the same with the third. And in fact, none of the seven had any children left. And last of all, the woman died. At the resurrection, whose life will she be? 
since the seven were married to her. You can begin to see they were trying to trap him every step along the way. And Jesus had to tell them, listen, God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are badly mistaken. In verse 28, one of the teachers of the law came to him and asked him, which is the most important commandment? And he said, this is the most important one, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is this, to love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. And after all that, after the testing, after the debating, after the arguing, is when Jesus finally sits down, tired and exhausted of people giving their, giving their excuses and arguments, and he sits down and begins to notice those who are walking in, giving their offering. And he sees the ostentatious display of flowery affections. He hears the congregation clapping and applauding for those giving enormous sums. And he thinks and notices it. He notices that those people think that that is what pleases God. And instead, he observes someone who comes up, tosses a few pennies, and points out her to his disciples and said, that's someone who's after my own heart. Someone who loves God, even amidst these wolves and charlatans, who's not trying to be ostentatious in the display of affection. And I guess the reason I'm preaching this today, church, is because so often we get it wrong. To be honest, this has been a startling, draw-dropping reaction to every church member who's ever heard this because we tell people you have to clean up, you have to act up, you have to give in order for God to accept you. And look at what happened in this text today. All that flowery language, all that ostentatious display of affection got nowhere. We teach Christians you have to give, do good, act up, clean up, stop drinking. And what this text says is you can't earn your way to God. You can't buy God's affection. Money won't buy his approval. And if, especially if your heart doesn't add up. And yet all the time, dear church, this isn't our message. All this time, dear church, we tell people the wrong thing. I guess quite simple. Instead of giving people the gospel to follow, we give them the law. And we're no better than everyone else showing our ostentatious displays of affection. Dear church, as we take communion and as we go into this time today, I just want us to reflect on one thing, to notice that there's nothing we can do to earn God's grace. There's nothing we can do to earn God's favor. The reality of the gospel is this, that Christ came into our lives to rescue us from the predicament that we could not get ourselves out of. That means by grace you have been saved through faith, not through works, so that no man may boast. We are all here, beggars before God, trying to show others about the good news of the Christ and the Lord Jesus who can set us free. And as we take communion today, I almost want to end abruptly so we can go holding on to that. Are you here today holding on to your good works, holding on to your flowery language like the Pharisees? Or are you here today saying, God, there's nothing I can do to earn your grace. The work's already been done. As we take communion, and especially as we reflect during the special music, I invite us to consider that question. We know that everyone wants to improve their spiritual health. But the truth of the matter is, 
We often let our anxiety and frustrations and disappointments get the better of us. And we come here to a church week after week and month after month, year after year, expecting it to make a difference, but the only problem is it doesn't. And I'm here today to say that you don't need one more sermon to make you a better person. You don't really need one more thing to let you change. You need the authentic power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to transform your life. And I'm praying that that is what happens today during communion. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary, whose load is heavy, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble and gentle, and you will find rest for your souls. This is the Lord's table. Jesus invites us to share this joyful feast. From east and west, north and south, people will come and take their place at this banquet in the kingdom of God. This table does not belong to any denomination. This table does not belong to any church. It belongs to Jesus. And it was at this table that he met people and heard their stories. And it was at this table that he deepened his friendship with poor folk and prostitutes in business class. And people around him were startled and stunned. And it was at this table with his bread and wine that he initiated the sacrament that we now celebrate. So come to this table. Leave him behind any baggage of arrogance or unworthiness. Do not think of this as, this is not for me. But think of this as, Jesus is for you. So accept this invitation to the friendship he cherishes and longs to feed us. Come, all God's people, to receive Christ's heavenly food. If this is your first time taking communion here at Seminary Church, Here's just a quick bit of directions. Everyone is invited to come forward. After we consecrate the elements, we'll have a couple of communion stewards uh, up in the front of the congregation. They'll break off a piece of bread and hand them to you, and then you'll take a cup of the juice back to your seat. At the end, after the con consecration, feel free to take the elements when you so desire. Our liturgy will be up on the screen. Feel free to follow along responsively by reading the text in bold. Would you please? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant with us to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying... Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who were oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners, and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. And when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in power of his word and his spirit. And on the night when Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. 
And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant, poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here in all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit in your church, all glory, honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite our musicians to please come forward.
This week, we have a few announcements. Of course, we just want to reiterate that tonight, in observance of the holiday, we will not have some more Sundays. This week, we invite everyone to come to our Roanoke Farmer's Market this Friday from about 5 to 8 p.m. We'll have a, a booth sponsored downtown. As far as uh, birthdays, we'd like to recognize all those who have birthdays. And also, I think this week we want a uh, special birthday for Marilyn Fleshman. So I don't know if, if she, she can see us when we wave, but let's turn, let's turn to the camera and wave to Marilyn and say, Happy birthday, Marilyn. Happy birthday. We hope we can see you. Yeah, that's right. Um, there are, of course, other announcements. Be sure to check the bulletin. We have a weekly uh, newsletter, uh, electronic newsletter, newsletter, so sign up for that if we haven't already. And uh, we go out today excited to, to proclaim that Jesus is Lord. So would you please stand in body or in spirit as we have our closing hymn. Well, this week, this, uh, yes, let's deserve it. Let's clap for that. That was a good one. That's right. That's right. All right. 
As we go into this holiday week, let's remember just the echoes of what we just sang. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Go with that blessing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.